Welcome to Pixel Composer 1.20.3 Beta. Let's get through what's new in this version. So first we have a number of new nodes, but we have this colorblind simulation or colorblind filter nodes. Now I have to admit that I have no idea how like colorblindness works. This is a shader that I get from different places, so I cannot say for sure the accuracies or the quality of it. But it will allow you to simulate different types of color blindness. Then we have the scatter sampler. So this is another node for generating noise patterns. But instead of using like a vector field, like pulling noise, it will just basically scatter input surface randomly. And you can also provide mass to contain the noise in the shape that you want. Then we have more UV related node. Yeah, you may notice from the previous version, I haven't mentioned it, but a lot of nodes now have this UV map input. And this allows you to provide custom UV map for the node. Well, and the two new UV nodes in this version is the UV Cartesian and the UV Polar. The UV Cartesian is basically the XY axis that we use normally, but you will have control over like position, rotation, scaling, and stuff like that. In this example with the draw shape node here, it has this UV map input and it will allow you to zoom into the shape by controlling these scale properties and you will see that it will scale in like losslessly right there will be no pixelation because we scale the uv map behind the node itself now you may want to make sure that the output of the uv map are in a higher bit so that it can have more detail if you use like a lower bit like 8 bit then there's going to be some pixelation because there's not enough color details to determine the uv values so i would say just go up to like 32 bit and you'll be able to like zoom in smoothly Another use is with the UV Polar, which will generate this Polar pattern, right? I create a comparison between using the UV Polar and using the Polar node. When you use the Polar node like this, it will use the information that already existed in the original surface. And there's a limit of how much information it can take from because it's like, it's a pixel, it quantizes. So when you try to distort it, you will see this kind of artifact. You may need some node like a D-stray or you may want to add some interpolation and then try to smooth it back later. You can avoid that by just using the UV polar coordinate directly in the stripe node. As you can see, because we provide custom UV into the shader itself, the output will be way smoother. And next we have a new node related to the particle system. Him. So we have a node that helps you create particle from point data. So for example, we can have this scatter point node that generate this point around a circle shape, right? And now I can convert it to a particle system. Another node is the mass distance, which will calculate the distance of particle to point and then convert it to a mass data, which I use to create some uh, animation like this. And it's an easier way for you to create like a more structured animation using the particle system. Then we have an improvement on the already existed node, like the ISO extrude now have new bottom map. So it's the same concept as a height map, but instead of controlling the height from the top, it's controlling the, the height from the bottom, if that makes any sense. And I use it to create like a, a gift box to create this image. There are also a number of improvements on the MK3 node. The tree leaf now have a new leaf shape called complex leaf, which will give you a lot more control over the shape of the leaf itself. You can modify the geometry of the leaf using curve data. You can also give custom gravity to each segment of the leaf to create some a nice looking leaf like this. I also changed the pair setting into this whole setting. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but it just basically means that you can control more than two pairs of leaf, right? You can have like a bunch of leaf coming from the same point. There's also a new leaf amount unit. So by default, it will fix the amount of leaf per branch, but now you can fix the distance between each leaf to maintain consistent uh, leaf density on each branch. And then there are some more improvements on other nodes as well. Like we have a new iteration setting for chromatic aberration for you to create more continuous, more smooth effect. We now have an inverse or flip Y property for the normal node, right? We have a mass input for the offset node and all the other change, the full list is gonna be in the description. Then we have some improvement to the user interface. In the add node dialog here, there will be a row of the recent node. In the preview panels, you now have an option to disable the gizmo so that it doesn't obstruct the previewing surface. Also, as usual, there will be a number of bug fixes in this version showing on the screen right now. And that should be it for, for this version. So I should be uploading this video close to the Christmas day. So like early Merry Christmas to everyone. If you notice on my social medias, I have upload one project a day. It's like a small exercise I did. All the projects will be related to Christmas stuff. A lot of them are just MK3. That's why there are a number of updates to the MK3 in this version as well. Normally, I upload the project file for all of those posts in the page. Patreon. So if you're interested in it, you can become a Patreon member. Also, if you are a Patreon member, your name will also show up on the video like right now. So special thanks for all the Patreon members. And yeah, anyway, thank you for watching and see you in the next one.